A very common type of exam question at the start of the paper will be about opportunity cost and also about PPCs. Okay? Now there are three types of questions you can be asked about production possibility curves. One is to demonstrate opportunity cost on them. One is to demonstrate efficiencies or inefficiencies on them. And lastly is to demonstrate how to increase the production of something on them. Okay, so we're going to look at each one of those scenarios and make sure that you can gain full marks on those types of questions when they come up. Right, to start with, I'm going to use the example of um, Caribbean sugarcane processes. This was an actual OCR exam paper um, a few years ago. Okay, it talked about uh, the choices being faced by Caribbean sugarcane processes. Okay, either to produce uh, more ethanol or not, basically. Okay, so this question was all about opportunity cost. The question was, well, using a PPC, um, how can we represent the concept of opportunity cost facing Caribbean sugarcane processes? This is how you would go about doing it. Okay, now normally, if they want to use the PPC curve, you'll get four marks just for drawing a correct diagram. Okay, four marks for the diagram, and if they want an explanation, that would be worth two marks. Okay, so the maximum worth of, of this kind of question will be six marks. Four for the diagram, two for the explanation. If they don't want an explanation, the question will just be worth four marks purely for the diagram. But if they've started you off on the diagram, maybe they've drawn axes and the PPC curve already, the diagram will only be worth two marks. Okay? But this question was a six mark question. So how would you start up? Well, firstly, you would always draw your axis. Okay? Now, when you draw a PPC diagram, your axes need to be labelled according to the information given to you in the case study. What are the two choices facing whatever firm you're trying to analyse? Those two choices need to go on the axis. Now I would recommend, I would recommend whatever you're looking to increase production of. So in your case study, whatever clue there is as to what is wanting to be increased production-wise, that thing should go on the x-axis. So in the case study, there was a lot of discussion about the increased production of ethanol, in which case ethanol should go on the x-axis. Whatever you're trying to increase production of, put on the x-axis. Okay, anyway, so you draw your axis, you label it properly, okay, it needs to be fully labelled according to the, um, the products um, or the items um, talked about in the case study, label it like that, and then draw your PPC. Okay. Now, you can draw a PPC shape like this, you can draw a linear PPC, which shows constant opportunity cost, that's fine. Okay, but just draw one of those two shapes. Okay, one mark for labelling the axis properly. One mark for drawing a PPC shaped correctly like that and labelling the PPC. Don't forget the label. So already, without even touching opportunity cost, you've got two marks. Amazing. Alright, now we need to show opportunity cost. How, does, how is that relevant for a sugarcane processes? using a PPC. Well, to start with, pick a point on the curve. Call that point A. Okay, so you pick a point and label it. As soon as you've done that, go down to your axis. Okay, so dash lines to both axes. Okay, and then label the points on the axis. Label this one X1, label that one Y1. Okay, X for X axis, Y for Y axis. X1, Y1, logical. Okay, now we need to show opportunity cost. So we need a point to compare to. Okay, now the question's all about um, opportunity cost in terms of increasing the production of ethanol. So let's increase the production of ethanol. Pick a new point where ethanol production is increased, call that point B. Again, draw your lines down. Okay? So anytime you pick a point on the curve, automatically get the lines drawn with it. Call that X2, call that Y2. Okay? Always label these with letters, unless they force you to use numbers. Don't use numbers, okay? use letters, it's an easier way of doing things. Alright, now still, this is worth two marks. Okay? We've not actually shown anything yet on this, on this PVC. We need to use arrows to show our full understanding of it. So, you need to draw an arrow implying that as a firm, okay, you move from point A to point B, production has changed, and the arrow shows that. So one mark just for showing the arrow, the movement, okay, from point A to point B. And in doing so, what's happened? We've increased the production of ethanol, okay, and we've reduced the production of sugar. Okay, those two arrows are fundamental. Okay? Now what I'd 
also recommend doing is actually highlighting the opportunity cost. So here we're trying to increase the production of ethanol, the opportunity cost of the units of sugar foregone. Okay, in this case it's Y1, Y2 units of sugar foregone. And I would label that on the side here, opportunity cost. In truth, yes, the third mark for doing that, your fourth mark is just for getting these arrows in. Okay, so the arrow increasing the production of ethanol, arrow reducing the production of sugar, that will get your fourth mark. But why not just say opportunity cost? So then you fully understand, you're really showing off to the examiner. Okay, I would do that. And that's your four marks, as simple as that. Now if you have two marks at the bottom, for an explanation, okay, it's really, really simple how to get the extra two marks. One mark is for simply stating okay, that you're moving along the curve from point A to point B. So you start it off like this. Okay, Caribbean sugarcane processors okay, have decided to increase the production of ethanol by moving along the curve from point A to point B. One mark. Okay? This then increases the level of ethanol production from X1 to X2, and in doing so, the level of sugar produced by the firm reduces from Y1 to Y2. Okay? The Y1, Y2 units foregone is the opportunity cost. Second mark. Okay, so one mark um, for saying that we're changing production levels from point A to point B, moving along the curve, one mark for that. Second mark for saying that by doing so, we are losing Y1, Y2 units of sugar. That Y1, Y2 unit loss is the opportunity cost. Second mark for that. As simple as that, okay? So that's opportunity cost questions. It makes it so much easier okay, if you put whatever you're trying to increase production of on the x-axis. It makes it very simple to show. All right, cool. Let's um, also show another type of exam question using PVCs. Okay, so let's keep... Um, that's fine. Okay, I'm going to keep the sugar ethanol example. Okay. Another type of question you can be asked uh, regarding PVCs is to show efficiencies or inefficiencies. Okay? So a common exam question will be pick a point on the PVC or pick a point on the diagram which is productively efficient. Okay? Or Pareto efficient, maybe. But certainly productively efficient. Okay? And you would pick a point on the curve. So let's say you pick point A. Fine. Okay? They might ask you to show a point that's inefficient, okay? in which case you pick a point inside the curve, call that point B. Okay? They might even ask you to pick a point uh, or to demonstrate a point that's unattainable, a point of production that at this point in time is unattainable for the firm, in which case you pick a point outside the PPC, label that point C. Okay? Right, you would get one mark for picking the right points, but normally you would get two marks below for explaining why. So let's say the question was pick a point that's efficient, okay, in which case point A, pick a point that's inefficient, in which case point B. Then it will ask you to explain why these points are efficient and inefficient. Two points okay, for each point labelled on the curve. Okay? So to explain point A, why is that efficient? Two marks. Why is point B inefficient? Two marks. And it's very, very easy to get these extra two marks with explanations. So how would you do that? First of all, you need to say, well, why is point A efficient? Point A is efficient because for this firm, okay, all of the scarce resources available, all the factors of production are being fully utilised. Okay? Production is being maximised at point A. One mark for saying that. Okay? So maximum utilisation of its factors of production. Okay? Productive efficiency, you can say. One mark for that. And then you need to say, well, that can be uh, represented Okay, that can be shown by point A lying on the curve. Okay, so point A lying on the curve is your second mark, amazingly. Okay, so one mark for explaining that this is productively efficient because production is being fully maximised, all of the factors of production are being fully utilised. One mark, second mark, shown by point A lying on the curve, second mark. How do you get two marks for point B to explain why that's inefficient? Point B is inefficient because at point B, there are scarce resources that are not being fully utilised, scarce resources being wasted, therefore production is not being maximised. Point B represents productive inefficiency, one mark. That is represented by point B lying inside the PPC, second mark. Really as simple as that. Okay? So that's how you show efficiencies and inefficiencies and then explain it down below. That's another type of exam question you can expect. The final type of exam question linked to PPCs 
is about how to increase the production of something. So not opportunity cost this time, just simply how to increase the production of something. There was one exam question where there was a choice between uh, cancer-relieving drugs and surgical treatments. And the question in the exam was, how should this healthcare firm, or the NHS I think, increase uh, the production of surgical treatments? Okay, that was an actual question. I'm just going to use sugar and ethanol, keep it to sugar and ethanol. But again, whatever you're trying to increase production of, put on the x-axis. Okay, so if it's surgical treatments, that would then go on the x-axis. Now you've got two ways of doing this type of question, two ways of answering it. Again, normally you'll have four marks for the diagram unless they start you off. So if they start you off with axis and a curve, the diagram will just be worth two marks. But if you're starting from scratch, four marks for the diagram and only two marks for explanation. Okay, so again, how would you do this? You'd start with your axis labelled properly. Whatever you're trying to increase production on the x-axis. One mark for axis properly labelled. One mark for PVC labelled. So that's two marks already out of four. Again, you start with the point on the curve. Okay, so let's pick point A. And again, as before, label the points. Go down to your axis, label that x1. Go to your y-axis, label that y1. Okay. Now we're trying to increase the production, okay, let's say of ethanol. Maybe that's the question. How can the Caribbean sugarcane process increase the production of ethanol? Well, you would show that by moving along the curve. Okay, so moving to point B. And at point B, more ethanol is being produced. Call that X2. Call that Y2. Okay, so again, when you pick a point, immediately label your points on the X and the Y axis. That's still worth two marks. Okay? Now again, we need to show exactly what's happened on the curve. So, We've changed production levels from point A to point B. We'll show that on the curve with an arrow. Okay, so the arrow from A to point B shows the movement in production. By moving from point A to point B, the units of ethanol produced has increased from X1 to X2. Okay, and the units of sugar produced has reduced from Y1 to Y2. Okay, so you get a third mark for showing the movement in production from A to B, and the fourth mark is just simply showing the increase in ethanol. Okay, the increase in production of ethanol, that's what the question asks. So drawing that arrow there gets your fourth mark. Okay? In truth, draw that one as well. If you want to label that opportunity cost to go the extra mile, you can. Okay, but that's where the fourth mark lies. Alright. You can also do it a different way. You could have maybe shifted the curve outwards. So in which case that would be PPC1 and this would be PPC2. And then if you're starting at point A, you would then maybe pick point C out. And you show an arrow from point A to point C, and you would label the points that way, let's say X3 and let's say Y3. Okay, you still do the same arrows and you still get four marks for doing that. Okay, two ways you can show the increase in the production of ethanol. Now the two marks for explanation are very important. Okay? One mark is very easy, one mark is not so easy. So the first mark, all you need to say is that the firm, that's so moving along the curve. The firm has decided to increase the level of ethanol production by moving along the PPC curve from point A to point B. By doing so, the level of ethanol production has increased from X1 to X2. One mark for saying that. Or if you've shifted, if you've shifted the curve, okay, the firm has now changed production from point A to point C, okay, now producing on a new PPC curve, PPC2. By doing so, the level of ethanol production has increased from X1 to X3. Okay, one mark for that, regardless. Then, your second mark is for saying, well, why has that happened? Why has the firm allowed, been allowed to move from A to B? How has the firm been allowed to move from A to C? You need to explain why that movement has occurred. Okay, so movement along, you just say, the firm has decided to recombine its factors of production. Okay? So the firm has decided to combine its factors of production differently okay, to then produce more ethanol. Okay, so the firm has decided to specialise in production of ethanol by recombining its factors of production to favour ethanol production. All right, that's your reason why, and that's an extra mark. Or if you've shifted the curve, you can say, well, a firm is, the firm has managed to increase production of ethanol we move from A to C by increasing the quantity or quality of its factors of production. For example, perhaps the firm has bought a brand new machine, which has enabled the firm to move from point A to point C, shifting the PPC curve outwards. Okay, as long as you state why, so if we're moving along the curve, okay, the firm has recombined its factors of production to suit ethanol production, 
or by shifting the curve, the firm has seen an increase in the quantity or quality of its factors of production, thus allowing it to move from point A to point C on its production possibility curve. You need to explain why, and those are the reasons why, and that will get you your full marks. Okay, so now you've got all these key questions here. You've got opportunity cost, you've got efficiencies, and you've got production increases on PPCs. They're the main types of questions you can get on PPCs. Make sure you know how to answer them. You should be scoring full marks in these questions. Hope that does it for you. Thank you very much.